Welcome to Season 2, Episode 12 of Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. I'm your host, Angela Watson, and I'm here to speak life, encouragement, and truth into the minds and hearts of educators and get you energized for the week ahead. Today, I've invited educator Lisa Dabbs to share her thoughts on the importance of teacher mentoring so that new teachers not only survive, but actually thrive. Visit truthforteachers.com to read the blog post, get links to recommended resources, and to share your thoughts on the show. So Lisa Dams is a very good friend of mine. She is a wife and a mom who started her career as an elementary school teacher in Southern California. She then spent 14 years as an elementary school principal. And in 2009, Lisa started supporting teachers um, in a new role as an educational consultant. So she's written books for teachers, she's conducted instructional coaching, she presents at conferences, she does online webinar, webinars, and she founded the NT Chat, the new teacher chat on Twitter. And she's done a lot more than that, but she is extremely passionate about mentoring and supporting new teachers. And today she's going to share with you why she has that passion and how you can get involved with her new teacher mentoring project so that you can either find or give support to other educators virtually. In my career as an educator, I have spent a tremendous amount of time working with new teachers. I myself was a teacher, and then I moved into the area of school administration, and I spent 14 years as an elementary school principal. In that time, I must have hired over 100 new teachers and saw many that were successful, but also saw several that were not. Most of the time in my experience, those new teachers who were excellent in interviews and who told me that they had everything it took to be the very best that they could be, failed in the classroom and failed very, very miserably. Despite the support that I gave them, despite the support that they were given by outside colleagues and even at sometimes their university, They weren't as successful as they could be. And one of the things that I noticed and observed about those new teachers that were not successful was that they didn't have a mentor. Now, some people scoff at the idea of mentorship and don't see it as something important, but I do. I really feel that the power of mentoring to transform our work, even an experienced teacher, or for that matter, an administrator, is essential. Everyone needs a mentor. Everyone needs a guide on the side. At least that's how I feel in my opinion as an educator. So I really believe strongly that mentoring matters. It matters because it offers acceptance, guidance, instructional support, hope, and optimism to teachers, particularly new teachers. The act of mentoring is a part of the fabric of many educational institutions, yet it's still a piece that's missing at our schools for those new to the education profession. Mentors are an important part of the process of a new teacher's career. A good mentor can offer just the right kind of insight, support, and guidance to set a new teacher on the right path in their practice, and a mentor should serve as the guide on the side as a new teacher is developing their craft. This guide that comes alongside a new teacher can be just the thing that makes the difference between a new teacher who is thriving which is something we all want, or one who is merely surviving. And oftentimes I see posts in my social media spaces where I'm active that say, new teacher survival guide and let's help new teachers survive. And whenever I see that, it really makes me cringe. I don't want any new teacher to simply survive or any veteran teacher for that matter. I want teachers that I connect with every day or as often as possible to thrive. So connecting an experienced teacher to a new one to the practice can be a challenge. Often those veteran staff at a school site may lack the desire to mentor, and I get that. I get that we're busy. I get that we have families and we have other obligations. But it can be so difficult if we don't take that step to support a new teacher on our campus. And then there are times that the skill set that we would like a mentor to have and provide a new colleague just isn't there. However, the opportunities to collaborate with a potential virtual mentor via social media, which I really, really love, or other online communities are limitless. 
A virtual mentor can fill the gap with much needed feedback and support and be available online where a face-to-face mentor may not be. So seeking a mentor, whether they be teaching next door to you or across the state, is an action that can ultimately lead, I think, to a very meaningful collaboration and something that we're seeking to do to support new teachers and even pre-service teachers as they get started in their practice. So in my early blogging journey, I began to explore the notion of mentoring. I reflected on my work as an educator, and I tried to recall the people in my past who had mentored me and those that I had mentored. While doing this, while doing blogs, while seeking out ways that I could take the idea of mentoring from face-to-face and onto a platform for virtual mentoring, I came upon an acronym for my consultant practice that I call IMET, Inspire, Mentor, and Equip Teachers to Teach with Soul. Because I know I didn't mention this earlier, but when I made the leap out of administration and away from the elementary school principal site and building, I decided that I would venture out and become an educational consultant. And so that's what I do now. So as I was looking at finding something that would help me to continue to press forward with my passion. I really believed that having the opportunity to have a mentor and supporting them to teach with soul would be amazing. And discovering Inspire, Mentor, and Equip as an acronym for my work, it summed up for me what I believe a true mentor does. Unfortunately, with the current challenges we face in education, I recognize it's hard for educators to take the time to truly I'm it. About two years ago, I landed on the blog of a new teacher as I was doing some work and thinking about, again, ways to expand the idea of face-to-face mentoring in a way that would be really robust and supportive and, and taking it to a different level and having it be global. I found the title of a post of a new teacher called Losing Hope. The teacher stated and started to say in the post that she had a dream, a dream to be the best teacher she could be to be the kind of teacher that students would be inspired by. But unfortunately, there were no clear expectations set for this teacher at her school, and worse, no support. This teacher's perception was that they would be supported as a first-year teacher, and rightfully so. But instead, they were placed in a sink-or-swim position, so this teacher sank. I was really moved by this teacher's post, and I responded. And here's some of what I shared with this young teacher who asked, for positive, encouraging words, who is reaching out on social media, hoping to get a response. And this is what I said. When I read your words, I believe I was under the illusion that I had support and help from all angles, when in reality, I hadn't felt more alone and lost. My heart went out to you. I was an elementary school principal for 14 years. During those years, I consistently spent time mentoring, supporting, and guiding my teachers. It's truly my passion. If you read the research on why young people like yourself leave the teaching profession, it turns out that it is exactly for those reasons you describe. A school should work to foster a culture where teachers collaborate and learn from one another. This is at the heart of how educators grow as professionals. Some of my colleagues still struggle with this piece. I apologize. We need to do much better. I entered the teaching profession in my early 20s as a kindergarten teacher. I was fortunate to come from a family of educators. However, I still encountered a great deal of frustration and anxiety in my first year. I felt very alone, as I did not have the support of a principal or mentor. I was new to the school. My kinder team members believed in kill and drill for kindergarten kids, and I was mortified. In addition to that, no one on staff had a child development degree. As a result, they weren't pleased when I began to talk about child development issues and how those directly influenced how children learn and should be allowed to develop. The use of hands-on learning activities versus paper-pencil task was not well received. The bottom line is that my first years were rough. Did I have a mentor teacher? No. Was it hard? Extremely. But I kept pressing forward because I believed in myself and cared deeply for my students. So as I finished my response, I was frustrated at the idea of the lack of mentoring support we were providing for new teachers all around the world, for those new to our profession. I was frustrated with the fact that this enthusiastic new teacher felt 
and was so disabled by her experience that she fell and no one was there to come alongside and lift her up. Why did this teacher lose hope? We know so much more now about how to retain and support new teachers. So where was her mentor? No new teacher should have to stick it out alone. A mentor can provide the help and hope that can turn the tide of a difficult situation for a new teacher. I believe strongly in the power of mentoring, which I think you can tell by my Truth For Teachers post today. I believe that this relationship is virtual and vital to the success of a new teacher. However, not all experienced teachers, as I said earlier at a school site, are able to take on this challenge. So over two years ago, I had the idea that if there weren't enough experienced teachers at a school site who could or were willing to mentor a new teacher, why not a virtual mentor who would be willing to lend support? So as a result, the Teacher Mentoring Project was born. So I reach out to you today on this Truth For Teachers post and let you know that if you're a new teacher or an experienced teacher who could benefit from a mentoring relationship, I urge you to seek out the group that I have listed on my site, lisadabs.com. To date, 156 educators from around the globe have made themselves available to mentor virtually through the first years and beyond because they believe, as I do, in the power of mentoring to support new teachers to thrive, not just survive. So I leave you with this question. If there are so many new teachers in the field who are not being as successful as we want, if we look at the research and see that so many teachers are still leaving the profession too early on, why aren't we making the time to mentor? Is it too challenging? Is it too much work? With the availability of so many tools and social media spots, mentors could easily collaborate with a new teacher and offer a wealth of supportive online resources, such as websites or lesson plans, uh, Twitter and eBooks. And the power of these tools to support and mentor new teachers would be phenomenal. With that said, I hope that in spite of the issues we all face each day, you'll consider reaching out to be a mentor, or if you're a new teacher listening to this post, find a mentor and be a mentor. I believe that by connecting to a mentor, either on your site, at your school, or via a virtual process, can make all the difference in the world. In addition to finding or becoming a mentor through Lisa's new teacher mentoring project, you can also join her new teacher chat. That's designed to support new and pre-service teachers too. So use the hashtag NTChat every other Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, And you can chat with Lisa and other teachers who are passionate about mentoring and will answer your questions about teaching. You can also go to lisadabs.com and you'll find her wonderful blog, which is called Teaching with Soul. Isn't that a wonderful name? Teaching with Soul. And on her website, you'll also learn how to connect with Lisa on other forms of social media. So thank you, Lisa, for sharing your thoughts. Thank you all for listening. Have a fantastic week. You can do this. And remember, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be worth it. Truth for Teachers is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. For more great podcast recommendations, go to edupodcastnetwork.com. That's edupodcastnetwork.com.